Hey everyone, thanks so much for tuning in. In this video, we're gonna take a look at a new model from my favorite underrated USA-made company. The company is Guardian Tactical, and the model is the Connex. So, here is the model. This was debuted at Blade Show 2017, and when I was at the show, I talked to them about, you know, potentially making a, uh, the perfect version for me. They were kind enough to acquiesce and that's the version you see in front of you. Um, so we'll go through specs, overall impressions, details, just as always, and then we are gonna talk about, towards the end of the video, some upcoming changes to this model and all current models that they have out. So if you've had your eye on one, um, and you like the way it's currently configured, you may wanna pull the trigger sooner rather than later, but we will get into that. So it does ship with just kind of a standard cardboard box, Here's the model number, I think, for all of them, and uh, I guess the specifics on my build. box just has some padding and a warranty card, so if you want to pause, you can read the warranty card here, and I'm sure the information's also on their website. We'll move that out of the way and jump into the specs, so, yes. Uh, pair of two is always dollar bill because we're rich, rich, rich. And the Helix Nano, so one of their other models, the um, only other one I have currently. All right, so in terms of specs, uh, blade length is 3.5 inches. You do have a finger choil slash sharpening choil, um, so the cutting edge is closer to 3.25. Handle length is about 4.6, overall about 8, eight, uh, almost 8 and a quarter, a little short of that. So, the um, some of the other specs here, the handle thickness, and let's compare it here next to the Para. Um, it is contoured, of course, and it's about 0 0.63 inches. The uh, handle width Closed position is about 1.3 inches, so it does take up a good bit of space in the pocket. And then the width on the blade itself is 1.5 inches, so um, certainly a, uh, a pretty wide, pretty wide blade. Now, the in terms of blade thickness here, um, blade thickness is 0 0.15. Let's compare that next to the Para 2. Not too different. Um, I don't recall what the pair of two is right now. Uh, 0.133, closer to 1.56. Now here is where a measurement that you guys would probably be interested in. Thickness behind the edge, they've definitely left a little bit more material behind the edge. This is a, a knife that you could certainly pound on, but not necessarily a slicer like the pair of two here. So let's take a quick look at the thickness behind the edge. Okay, right, that's where I'm at, right there, right behind the secondary bevel, you know, 0 0.046. Whereas with the Para 2, I go right behind the bevel, you know, 0 0.028. So obviously quite a big difference in, uh, you know, thickness behind the edge there. Although the pair of two being a full flat grind, this is known as, you know, the predominant go-to slicer in the knife world. So, anyways, one potential uh, difference between the two there. So, all right, let's get into some more detail on this particular one. Now that we've taken a look at most of the specs, this one weighs in on my scale at 4.6 ounces. So, some things that make this knife unique. Um, Essentially, I think the most interesting piece is the aluminum backspacer here that essentially serves as the backbone or the chassis to this knife. And then you have these carbon fiber uh, scales or essentially overlays of sorts um, that are essentially connected to the aluminum's backspacer or you know spine there. So that's why the aluminum backspacer here that you can see kind of protrudes out a little bit. Really interesting design. But this knife did require, in order to accomplish that goal of, you know, carbon fiber scales on both sides, um, it did require this aluminum backspacer to serve as the spine. 
So hopefully that makes sense, um, but it does make for a very unique looking you know, backspacer here and then the way that the blade incorporates while we're here centering, maybe a smidgen off, maybe uh, maybe right there would be absolutely perfect, but um, close enough for me. And lock up. It does have, so this is kind of interesting, but it does have um, the spring bar in here is stainless steel, and then it has a stainless steel overlay on top of the stainless steel liner. Um, that makes it replaceable and um, obviously gives it a very interesting look using what is a subframe lock. So we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, proprietary hardware on you know the pivot, very very attractive, and you know the the knife is not really meant to be taken down. This one has the titanium pocket clips. So, anyways, that I mean those are kind of the key features of the knife: ceramic bearing, ceramic detent incredibly smooth it does have a flipper and an opening hole here and it has an incredible sound so all right I think that's it for the specs um, as you can see the name when it was manufactured the blade steel and just to clarify CPM 154 is not the same thing as 154 CM um, that comment seems to be coming up quite a bit these days both on my videos and on the forums CPM 154 is the powdered version of 154 CM um, it's more akin to S35 VN from just about everyone's use and reports and so forth it's uh, common knowledge at this point so um, some Jimmy care on the spine but anyways that I think that's it for the specs so carbon fiber aluminum this one has been given a full bronze treatment so the Hardware and everything is all stainless steel, and it was heat colored or heat anodized, even though anodized is an electrical process. But it's been heat colored or heat tempered, as well as the blade. The blade was heat tempered, the bronze coloration to match, which was my request. And you know, they were nice enough to do it. And then the pocket clip is titanium, and that was anodized, you know, a bronze color as well. So, bronze and carbon fiber throughout, really cool piece. But anyways, overall impressions. Oof, seven minutes in, I apologize. And a couple others for eye candy here. Uh, these are both the Helix Nano and Titanium and Carbon Fiber. So overall impressions, um, you know, again, Guardian Tactical is my favorite underrated U.S. knife company. Their fit and finish is exceptional. They use very high quality materials. They're a family-owned business. Um, they... They try to do everything right, you know, being family owned, they may not have the quickest response time for questions, things like that, um, but I love what they do. I think the quality is exceptional. Um, you know, price point on this one at least is anywhere from 330 to 370, depending on if you do G10 or carbon fiber, which is what you would expect to pay for, you know, a US made knife, um, not from a massive company, you know, like Benchmade or ZT or any of those. So. Anyways, I love what they do. The aesthetics is definitely not for everyone. They have a very modern, very kind of futuristic look to their knives, which I appreciate, I like. From the first one I had several years ago to my current ones. Um, you know, if you like the aesthetics and you don't mind the thickness behind the edge, you know, you're not looking for, you know, a pair or two slicer, then again, you'll, you'll love this knife and you'll love any of their knives because the quality is there. All right, so let's take a look at this in detail, and then we will talk about the upcoming changes. So again, um, flat grind, slight transition here towards the tip versus this portion. I believe the tip is ground a tiny bit thinner. Might as well check. I probably should have done these before the video, but whatever. Point zero five two. So if I won, there's a transition in the blade grind, but the thickness behind the edge appears to be the same overall. Um, again, you know, it's it's got some meat behind the edge. This thing can take some use and abuse if you wanted to. You do have a finger, well, kind of a finger notch here or a, a choil, a finger choil towards the front. Um, lets me choke up like so. I would not lay my hand, f well, kind of. 
kind of. It's it's moderately sized for my hands. A large one would be better, but for this one it's fine if you really want to get in and get in some detail work in. You could, although again with the thickness behind the edge, I don't know this is necessarily a detail type of knife. Um, but you could, again, I mean, you know, any knife is better than no knife for whatever task you're trying to accomplish that requires a sharpened edge. Opening hole, really interesting cutout. It's an interesting shape, but it works well. You guys saw me use it, uh, you know, middle finger, first finger, no problems. Flipper tab has a little bit of jimping, no sharp edges. Works very, very well to deploy this large, heavy blade. Um, and it's, again, very smooth on their ceramic bearings. Now this one is a smidgen blade heavy. Um, if I could, it's not going to really want to balance on my finger here. It is a smidgen blade heavy. Um, it, it can kind of do it though if you get it just right. But the balance point is kind of more along the line of right underneath the pivot as opposed to where the finger choil is. In hand it feels fairly balanced. Um, slightest detection of blade heavy. Again, it's not a huge concern for me. Proprietary pivot, and you guys are probably wondering, well, how do you service it? I have heard on occasion they may have sent out the tools, but they do red Loctite. Um, they're not really meant to be used or serviced. They, they want you to send it in if there's a problem. With the red Loctite, though, I have not had to disassemble any of these knives that I've had, and I think this is my fifth from them want to say. Yeah, probably my fifth one from them. Um, I haven't had any issues and because they do have a stainless steel on stainless steel contact, if you want to hit it with, you know, the lubricant or cleaner of your choice and blast it out, works just fine. So again, that may be a dissatisfier for some of you. I don't care. I really like the knives. So no voids on the carbon fiber. A lot of machine work. You guys can see the various peaks and valleys in this one. Um, that give it a very comfortable feel in the hand, very ergonomic. There's certainly a method to the madness here. And this one is number 97. Apparently they switched to titanium in the 90s on the pocket clip. I think some of the prior pocket clips were stainless steel and so they might have, um, they might be a little more stiff than this one. This one works really well. They did transition away from the two screw attachment, you know, to a one screw, a little bit deeper for this model. I like both clips. Um, I've actually learned to appreciate this one quite a bit for ease of use in and out of the pocket. But another look at the aluminum uh, backspacer here, the way that it integrates into the handle. Then look at that stainless steel lock insert and the way that integrates into the design very very attractive looks great and yeah so again it's um it's really well done i mean like their fit and finish is exceptional they do really nice knives um they're a nice family i've talked to them at several shows so um, i've liked their stuff since the very beginning i slipped all right anything else so Let's talk about what changes are coming up, not only with this knife, but with all of their knives. So, one thing you might have noticed up to this point is, hey, that looks an awful lot like a subframe lock <clears throat> that, that Kai and uh, ZT or Kershaw has patented. And to answer the question, yes, yes it does, because it is, you know, I guess from a, a definitional standpoint um, or the language standpoint, it is a subframe lock. So. Because this is a subframe lock, um, ZT or Kershaw Kai did reach out and ask them to stop making the subframe locks, which they agreed to. And so they are selling off the last of their inventory with these lock faces. And then going forward, they will be transitioning to a, a frame lock with the stainless steel lock insert. So you won't see these types of locks on any models, on any new builds going forward from them. In fact, they are going to come back and redo, you know, the Helix and the Deltrix and all their current models that they have with, um, you know, uh, frame locks and stainless steel lock inserts. So um, if you did like these, you'd have to pick them up, you know, whatever dealers have left currently or um, on the secondary market used, um, but you won't be seeing those going forward. 
Now what does that mean for this model in particular? Well, this model is built around the aluminum frame with um, you know, carbon fiber scales and then the subframe lock. If they're switching to a frame lock on this one, then this side will have to be titanium. And then if this side is, is titanium, the you know the backspacer and aluminum doesn't quite make sense. So sadly they are for now going to essentially discontinue the Conix model um, for this foreseeable future because the apparently doing this uh, you know backspacer or whatever in titanium and then the lock side in titanium um, would make it a very very expensive to produce knife so so that will change so essentially they only ended up making around 200 of these and that is it um, no no the ETA is to far when they're gonna bring it back or if they're gonna bring it back so if you did like this one um, essentially whatever's in stock with dealers is what you're gonna get and for those of you guys who said hey are they gonna make more with the bronze like this one and I said yeah I'm sure they are um, I don't know that that's gonna be the case anymore uh, this might have been the only one or there might have only been a handful of them that were done you know with uh, bronze everything on it so uh, feel bad if I told anyone that they would be more for sure there may not be so anyways that is what's going to happen with um, you know coming up um, I was talking to the owner at Guardian Tactical. First, he was kind of bummed about, you know, the process because they started making these before the subframe lock was awarded to Kai USA. But, you know, at this point, he's actually pretty pumped about redoing all the knives, relaunching, um, you know, with the new uh, frame locks and, and lock inserts and kind of doing a few more tweaks. So he's kind of excited about the upcoming changes. And then they have some new models in the works as well that are pretty exciting but i can't share just now with you guys so anyways that is the conics in a nutshell here that's the changes to the upcoming models oh and again for those of you who asked if they're going to do more of you know the helix nano and titanium uh, again that's also been put on hold i'm not sure the eta win because of the you know required changes so anyways that's the conics in a nutshell that's some of the upcoming changes for guardian tactical um, their stuff is available at dealers or you can potentially shoot them an email if you're looking for something in particular but that should do it um, fun knife very cool very well made um, again I really like their stuff so check them out hopefully this is new information to some of you if you haven't seen this brand before and uh, more videos to come as always thanks so much for watching you can follow me on Instagram for more daily content take care